Sorry, appears ordinary until you see the core side of it. And what you're looking for is a story behind the news. We bring it to you from Lagos, the commercial capital of Nigeria. Giving you all sides and political stories round the clock. Every detail from the start line to the final whistle. Core TV News, expanding your view. Thank you for joining us. This hour on Court TV News. I am Nifemi Oguntoye, and here are the stories we're tracking this hour. The national leadership of all progressives Congress has formally received the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Aminu Tambua, as a party member. Party Chairman John Odigo Oyego presented the nation's number four citizen to the party delegates at Special National Convention in Abuja. He also introduced five party members who have indicated interest in getting APC's presidential ticket and secured a commitment from them to campaign with decorum. It is a mini convention, but it had all the trappings of a major political event. And coming a few hours after Speaker Tambo's defection, it was not surprising that the APC rolled out the drums. Party chairman John Odigo Yugun formally welcomed the Speaker and described his defection as a major blow for the ruling PDP. Welcome the right honorable Aminu Tamuwa, the number four citizen of this great nation. Number four is already with us. Number three is going to be in the park in February. Number two is also coming. And finally, one of these great men who have declared themselves as aspirants for the office of president, one of them is going to be your president next year. For the speaker who had long before now been hobnobbing with the opposition, it was a meeting of like minds. It is an honor and privilege to join you all today at this special convention of our great party, the All Progressives Congress. I'm really glad to be part of the ABC family. ABC! The party also formally introduced individuals jostling for the right to fly the party's flag next year. Only former Vice President Atiku Abubakar was absent, but a new face was seen among the crowd of aspirants, Governor Rochas Okorocha. One of these great men who have declared themselves as aspirants for the office of president under the platform of the APC. One of them, General Buhari, uh, the governor of Kano State, the great Kokwasia, uh, the governor of Imo State, our great friend Nda Azaya, and of course, the former vice president of this great nation, Al Haji Atiku Abubakar GCOA. One of these people, watch them closely, I'm going to call them on the stage later. One of them is going to be your president next year. Our intention, God willing, is to secure this country and efficiently manage it. So God help us. Let me say to all of you, my brothers and sisters in this great party, that President Jonathan is not a problem of APC. Let me say to you, needless using any words that is uncomplimentary against you. The only problem of APC is the ability to produce a votable, acceptable candidate that can defeat PDP in 2015. The mini-convention was called for the party to amend its constitution 
and when the affected clauses were tabled before delegates, the proposals scaled through unanimously. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I, Honorable Abike Dabiri Erewa, from what he Ikorotu local government area of Lagos State, the state of excellence, hereby seconds the motion as moved by Senator Lawa Shuaibu. I so second. At the end, party leaders expressed hope that the elective convention slated for later in the year will also be as successful. The APC's mini convention was, however, not without any incident, as two sets of delegates from Abia State engaged each other in a free for all. Plastic chairs and iron rods were used in the course of the clash just as the event began. There, away from there, President Goodluck Jonathan is back uh, as to back up his interest in a second term in office by collecting the nomination firm of the People's Democratic Party on Thursday. Presidential spokesman Ruben Abati discussed this at a news conference in Abuja. He also reviewed PDP governors, transformation ambassadors of Nigeria, and a number of individuals and groups contributed over 98 million naira to enable Jonathan pay the required 22 million naira for the firm. Groups and communities who have sent donations and made pledges to assist him to pay the required 22 million naira for the PDP presidential nomination fee and expression of interest form. He acknowledges and accepts with immense gratitude the following donations and pledges that he has received from a broad spectrum of Nigerians. Mr. Kennedy Ikena Udweme, 5,000 Naira. Mr. Izemagu Sonde Namde, 10,000 Naira. PDP Governors, 22 million Naira. Gumbe Youth Vanguard for PDP, 500,000 Naira. Yamaho Deba Good Luck Support Group, 200,000 Naira. Coalition of Gumbe Support Groups for Good Luck Ebele Jonathan, 2 million Naira. In a Youth Coalition, for good luck, 500,000 Naira. Nigerian Women Pray for Jonathan, 1 million Naira. National Association of Widows, 100,000 Naira. National Council of Women Societies, 500,000 Naira. Female members of the PDP Board of Trustees, 500,000 Naira. Joint Association of Persons with Disabilities, 100,000 Naira. National Association of Market Women, 500,000 Naira. Community Awareness and Development Network, 1 million Naira. He assures the donors that he will continue to do his utmost best at all times to fully justify the great confidence they have placed in his leadership. Spokesman Ruben Abati. A coalition of 13 civil groups have presented governorship firm of the People's Democratic Party to Adamawa State Governor Bala James Ngalari. Speaking on behalf of the groups, a former secretary to the state government, Moses Ngbali, says the people of the state contributed the money for the firms to drive the campaign of the governor ahead of the 2015 governorship election. More than 13 different groups contributed well over 150 million naira, out of which we took 11 million to buy this. Contribution was, contributions will come, will contest this thing, without, you will contest without us reverting to you for anything, by the grace of God. Amen. We want to wish you well, and we want to wish you the best of luck. I give you this thing with the prayer that God in his infinite mercies will give you favor, 
support Amen. and support the people of Adamo. Amen. Larry accepted the firm and promised to continue consultations before making his intention formal. He, however, added that the voice of the people is invariably the voice of God. I've accepted these forms that you have given me. I'm praying, I'm consulting. Basically, the voice of the people is the voice of God. Yes. The facts you have enumerated are absolutely correct in terms of the fact that I was going for the senatorial election. But I've listened to you. You know, this is not about me about anybody, it's about the good people of Adamawa. Yes. In me time, I'll consult prayerfully, help me pray, so that at the end of it all, it is not my decision, it is not anybody's decision, but the collective decision of the people of Adamawa. You recall that Ingelari had earlier picked a nomination firm for the senatorial seat of Adamawa North Senatorial Zone. Meanwhile, Speaker Adamawa House of Assembly Amadou Fentiri and seven other governorship aspirants in the state have ganged up against Governor James Ngulari ahead of the 2015 governorship election. They said the governor must not be allowed to contest the governorship primary of the party in the state. The eight aspirants on Wednesday stumped the National Secretariat of the party, insisting that the zoning arrangement earlier reached with them that the party must be kept. Apart from Fentiri, those who also visited the party to register the grievances were a former political aide to President Goodluck Jonathan Ahmed Gulak, son of a former PDP national chairman Awal Tukor, and former Minister of Health Andy Hung. Others are James Barka, Aliyu Kama, Marcus Gundiri, and Abubakar Geria. A former chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, Nuhu Rabadu, who was part of the team, with whom the agreement was made, however, was not present. It will be recalled that the party and the governorship aspirants who voluntarily withdrew from the PDP primaries last September had agreed for the governorship position to be zoned to Adamawa Central District. In Adamawa politics, of all the senatorial zones, north, south, and central, it is only the central that is yet to produce a governor. The agitation to bring more women into mainstream politics and decision-making in Nigeria was again brought to the fore at a program with the theme Women's Participation in Governance ahead of the 2015 general elections. The event was organized in Lagos by the Women Arise for Change Initiative. Olajimoke Olatunji has more. Women participation in Nigerian politics had a grassroots has become an issue of great concern following belief in some quarters that Nigerian women have been relegated politically to the background. There are documented evidence around the world over the importance of women population and their contributions to societal development. According to the 1991 census in Nigeria, women account for about 50% of the population, but they are underdeveloped and underrepresented in politics. Factors identified in Estan's literature as essential determinants of women participation include social and political relationships in a given society, male domination, political parties and culture of formal political structures. It is against this background that the Women Arise for Change Initiative organized the forum to push for more women participation in governance and decision making, especially as the countdown to the 2015 general elections gather momentum. What is the essence of the position of the woman leader? Do you have a budget in your political party? How many women leaders here have a budget? If you want something, you either go to the party chair or the secretary or whoever has a budget. So, I've been issue, your position is nothing. They have made sure that you cannot perform in that position. That is the point. And unfortunately, that is the only position that political parties assure women. It's the only position. 
That is their own affirmative action for women. Therefore, why must you create a position that has no power? The only power they give women leaders is to campaign for them, mobilize women for them. President of Women Arise for Change Initiative, Joe Okeo Domaki, calls for an equal representation of women as the 2015 elections draw closer and urged all women not to be deceived by the antics of the politicians. It's a gradual thing that will gather momentum. And in gathering such momentum, women themselves are the ones who should take the bold and viable, and viable step in ensuring that they can also com compare, contest, interact, and make more meaningful impact in terms of politics. It is generally believed that women's suffering is have due to lack of representation and imbalances in the leadership scheme. While the rest of the world is in progressive in women's participation, especially in governance, Nigeria is still lagging behind and the rest of the world is still waiting to see if 2015 will be a watershed year that will usher in a new Nigeria. Or Lajumoke or Latinjiko TV News Lagos. The states, as promised to assist Nigeria, achieve a peaceful, transparent and acceptable election in 2015. U.S. Deputy Assistant Secretary for African Affairs Robert Jackson disclosed this when he paid a courtesy call on the chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission, Atahiru Jaga. Responding to the pledge for assistance, the INEC chairman assured the Americans of free and credible elections. Next. Transparent, incredible elections here in Nigeria. Uh, we are committed to working uh, with the commission, with the political parties, uh, with government, civil society, with all the actors involved in the election process to assist Nigeria to have uh, elections that build upon the progress that we've seen uh, uh, in previous years. And uh, we look forward to uh, having an exchange about some of the uh, issues that you are facing uh, over the next uh, months until February. We know that you have a very busy schedule, uh, but uh, the fact that you have included us in that busy schedule really uh, 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 encourages us and uh, uh, makes, makes us greatly appreciative uh, of your concern and understanding and uh, encouragement. You're on to Call TV News live from Lagos. I'll be back after now with more stories. Don't go away. There is an Ebola virus epidemic in some West African countries. The Nigerian government wants you to be aware and watch out against the spread of Ebola in your community. Help keep our country safe and watch out for severe cases of fever, headaches, diarrhea, chest and abdominal pain, sore throat, cough, red eyes and bleeding from the eyes, ears and nose especially when these symptoms are found in persons coming into Nigeria from other West African countries. Protect yourself. Wash your hands regularly with soap and running water or use a hand sanitizer. Avoid contact with the blood, urine, feces or saliva of animals like bats, monkeys, gorillas, chimpanzees or infected persons. The Ebola virus is deadly. Don't catch it. Don't spread it. This message is brought to you by the Federal Ministry of Information. Welcome back. For more on the news, you can visit any of our social media platforms. On Facebook, it's facebook.com forward slash cool TV news. On our Twitter handle at cool TV news and J. You can watch our news and all the programs on YouTube now at youtube.com forward slash cool TV. Live a space and news. Now, the defection of the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Aminu Tambua, to the All Progressives Congress has not ceased to generate reactions. In our show state, diverse opinions by party officials of the two major parties, the PDP and the APC, have trailed the defection. Rashid Rashid now reports. Lastly, sir, there has been reports around of you dumping PDP today. When are you declaring your presidential ambition under the APC? Yes, no part of this interview. That was the one of the many questions asked Tambowal when speculation was rife about his intention to defect. However, the rest they say now is history. The ripple effect of Tambowal's defection is now a subject in political circle as members of the PDP and APC national stage have taken expected positions on the development. Tambowal should be manly enough 
and should be honorable enough to resign not only the speakership of the House of Representatives, he must have to vacate his seat as a member representing the Tambua Federal Constituency of Sokoto State in the Federal House of Representatives. can only go to court and declare his office vacant. They can't do that on their own. The Lord of is such a power. You can't use police to arrest him. He has, that's not, it's not a criminal offense. You can't just speak, you can use a political fiat and tell him, vacate your office. There's no, you have to go to court. Let the court pronounce it so. The party stalwarts, who are also lawyers, give different interpretation of the law on Tambo's defection from the PDP to the APC. The only, the only proviso is that the only opportunity that can be uh, available for that to happen is when there's a division. And I tell you, PDP remain one rock solid, indissoluble family, the largest political party in North Africa. You can defect under certain conditions when there's a division in your party, when there's a crisis in your party. And everybody knows that today, PDP is a crisis ridden party, crisis ridden. And that crisis has shaken it to, to its roots, over at the national level. So, for everybody to say uh, there's no crisis in PDP today, it might be more be blind. For Wale for Laramie, a civil activist, the defection of the speaker is for the progress of the national cause. The way the number four citizen has been conducting himself at the National Assembly, I mean, particularly the House of Representatives, has been very nationalistic. I think uh, his deflection must have been informed by a very nationalistic uh, uh, issue that, well, means well for Nigeria. So what are the overall implications of Tambo's action for the polity? We had seen this thing coming long before now. It's unfortunate. He has beaten the finger that, that fed him. Therefore, he, there must be a fresh election. We are waiting and the game has just started. The, the highest of it is the, the version of the speaker. That's the first time in Nigeria history. Uh, and um, it is sending a signal is to the PDP, to Jonathan, that they have to vacate. He said in the, he, he to them that his time is over. It, it portends uh, good dynamics to a progressive, from a uh, conservative party to a progressive party. It, it's a it's, it's good signal that 2015, we're going to have a very interesting uh, uh, political play out. The move, which has been tacitly described by some political observers as a clever one, considering its timing and the subsequent adjournment of plenary, is bound to result in more drama ahead the 2015 general elections. Rashid Rashid, or TV News, Oshobo. The National Secretariat of the All Progressives Grand Alliance came alive on Wednesday as some governorship aspirants from Emo State showed up to collect their nomination forms. Issues ranging from unemployment to security were key areas the aspirants promised to look into as the parties strive to reclaim Emo State. The aspirants argued that the Okorocha administration started well but later lost focus. My major areas of focus are just five simple points. Education, which I said in most states will be a state that will export education. Two, agriculture. Three, health and environment. Four, water supply. And last, security. It's not that you cannot do other things, but these are the five major areas. People ask me, what of road, road building? I said the road building is a function of government, and none of these five will work without good roads. This is the time for professionals, with credible track record of uh, credible of uh, proven ability, competence, um, conversant with global best practices in the management of men and resources, to step up to the plate and aspire to leadership positions. And that wraps it. They saw on Code TV News. Do join us again at the top of the hour for more stories. I'm Nifemi Ogutui. Thanks for being back.